Start game now. Welcome to all my friends in YouTube land. This is the No Swear Gamer, and today I have a very special unboxing for you. I will be unboxing the Retro Junk Box. Not the imitator, the real deal. Here's a little bit of history behind the Retro Junk Box. Once upon a time in a land not so far away, there was a podcast about old video games, Nintendo video games, I believe, and they had, from my understanding, a Retro Junk Box where you put in a whole bunch of retro video game items into it you send it to somebody that person would take some retro games out put some more in and keep spreading the wealth uh, later on they decided to resurrect this idea i was a member and am a member of the retro league forums the retro league is a very cool podcast that i recommend it talks about old video games and the thing that i like about it is they keep it clean it's pretty family friendly if anyone does slip up, they uh, actually beep out the bad words. But typically, there's no bad words to even uh, be concerned about. And it's very, uh, very good conversation, in my opinion, about old retro games. I was on the forums there, and a guy by the name of Michael said, Hey, we are going to start up the junk box again. So I said, Yeah, let me do this. Uh, Michael is a part with another guy named Jeremy of a, another podcast called the Cartoon Retrocast. They cover old cartoons now be advised they i would not say that they're family friendly they do use adult humor they do use uh swear words so if you are uh, if you're like me and you don't prefer to have swearing in your stuff it might not be your cup of tea but they are some really uh great guys over there appreciate them guys and what they're doing with the retro junk box so i said yeah hook me up and here i am with the retro junk box it has traveled quite a few uh, miles away I think something like 20,000 miles I am the 12th stop I believe and what I am going to show you is what I am taking now there are rules with the junk box I can only uh, show you what I'm taking out I can't show you what's inside or what I'm putting in because that's meant to be a surprise for the next person now I might make another video after this and release it once the retro junk box has fulfilled its course but for now, let's go on and see what I have taken out of the box. Now, as you can see, this box has shown some wear and tear. It's a bit beat up already. This is actually the second one they already had to replace at one time. I kind of taped it up a little bit here and there. Um, and it is just been full of stuff. When it came in, it weighed over 11 pounds. And what I'm going to show you is not even half of what's inside the box. It's just what I took out. So first of all, let's start out with a few comic books. We have this is the Identity Crisis. Um, forgot to tell you that all the stuff that's in here is supposed to be based on stuff uh, from the year 2000 and before. Nothing after the year 2000. This is cheating a little bit. It is 2004, but Superman is older than that, so it counts. So um, I'm a fan of the DC Universe a little bit as far as uh, cartoons and stuff goes. Big fan of the Batman animated series and Justice League. Have not really read a lot of the comic books in quite a while, so I look forward to looking at this one looks pretty serious and um, I think someone dies so we will find out what's in that later also took a couple what if comic books these were made by Marvel and what they did with the what if series is they took a significant kind of point in the Marvel timeline and they decided to say well what if it didn't happen the way we know it happened and uh, they came up with different stories. So this one is a what if Punisher had killed the Spider-Man. So I guess at one time he was trying to kill him and did not. But this time he does. So um, interesting little story. And I have another one that says, what if the Fantastic Four battled Doctor Doom before they got their powers? Ooh. Um, not again. It's been a while since I read some comic books. But... Uh, the good thing about this series is that you really don't need to know a whole lot since they're self-contained. And that's what I liked about these two, you know, self-contained. And they had some really cool ads inside that I thought were kind of neat. How about this one? A cartoon advertisement for Bonk's Adventure for the TurboGrafx-16. How's that? That's pretty cool if you remember the TG-16 and Bonk. All right, next up, I took out... X-Men Alpha, very shiny comic book. Look how shiny that is, man. It's like silver paper, really fancy schmancy. Um, 
It says it's a, it's a new beginning. I uh, enjoy X-Men stuff like movies and the old cartoons. So I figured, hey, it's the first episode of or the first issue of this comic. I'll try this one out, too. So nice and shiny X-Men comic book. All right. Let's see what else we got. Okay. If it's a retro junk box, it should have a copy of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Um, have this already, but there's a reason I'm taking this one out. Uh, I'll show that if I do another video of this box. But one thing I found cool about this uh, copy is, I mean, it's not great of shape. You got a lot of bubbling, the, the label's peeling, but check this out. 29 cents. It's been a long time since I've seen any video game with a price that low. There was a time when you could not even give these things away. You know, there were just so many flooded the market. Everyone had a copy. Nowadays, it actually goes for a little bit more than that on eBay. You're not going to find one for 29 cents unless you stumble on a garage sale. But uh, it seems like everyone who decides to buy a Nintendo again has to get this. So it has risen a little bit in value, but still classic Super Mario Brothers duck cut for the Nintendo Entertainment System. All right. I got some figurines in here. Let's see. I got a couple DuckTale characters. We got Gizmo Duck and Scrooge McDuck. Nice money bag there. So just some cool little, I guess it's PVC. Is that what they're called? PVC figures. So they will come by. Maybe they'll help me review some stuff in the future. Uh, what else do we got? Got some Game Boy games. Some regular old Game Boy games. First up, um, Roger Clemens MVP Baseball. So um, just curious how this baseball title will play. It's really hard to see. This one's in bad shape. But this is Super Mario Land 2. So do not have a copy. Of, I have a, the original, but not the sequel. And this is Quest for Camelot. Now, from what I understand, this is a little bit Zelda-like. So I thought I'd give it a try just for that alone. I actually tried to buy this once. I almost bought this on Amazon. They had new copies for like nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. Only a few bucks. Almost bought one. I can't remember why I didn't. But now, hey, got it now. So I'll try that out later. All right. Ooh, this is, this is kind of neat. Um, someone earlier in the junk box got one of these for Dig Dug. I wish I could have got that. I really like Dig Dug. But this is cool, too. This is a mappy little uh, figurine set. You can pull off the character. You can put them back on another square peg and just move them around. It sits on your desk. You know, it has a little button. You can play it. That's all it plays, but it does a decent job at what it does. Uh, you can replace the battery, so it's not one of those toys where when the battery dies, it's no good. So I thought this was neat, and I think that this was not really released in the U.S. I think this might have been a foreign thing, not quite sure. But Mappy, you know, here here uh, Gizmo Duck can go play some Mappy for a while. What else do I got here? All right. Here's another figure I got. Vintage Star Wars. I believe this may have been the driver of the AT-AT. I'm not sure, but... Hey, it's vintage, vintage Star Wars, another guy who might help me do some reviews in the future. Loose, no weapons or anything, but here he is. So uh, he's going to have a seat over here by Mappy. And this looks like it was a part of a keychain or something, but it is one of the Chomp Chomps from the Mario series, probably most famous in Super Mario 64. So I don't know, I might hook this up on a keychain or just let him bounce around somewhere. So there we go, we got that guy too. This was interesting. TV Guide from June 25th, 1983, with the Hoff on the cover. I was a Knight Rider fan, so I thought this was interesting. I think it might be, wow, they actually advertise cigarettes. Naughty, naughty. So back in the time when you can advertise cigarettes uh, more often, I guess. Oh, it looks like, uh, is that going to be Rocky playing? Yeah, Rocky 3 is coming up soon. May have to catch that. So, um... Yeah, I thought it'd be interesting just to kind of leaf through this and see what was playing and what kind of uh, more fun. All right, Reno's slot machines, okay, whatever. Not a really gambler. Oh, Kmart portrait ideas. I thought it'd be just cool just to flip through this and look at just what was playing on what days and some of the some of the different ads that they had, those retro ads. So um, yeah, I might look this through. TV guide. All right, <clears throat> now we have Captain America and the Avengers. This is just the instruction booklet, but I actually have this game, and I have it for the Super Nintendo. So how nice is that that I can put an instruction manual with it? So, 
you, you're kind of getting the idea. Um, the junk box is kind of like a big old junk drawer for retro stuff. People say, hey, what am I going to do with this manual? And I say, I'll take it. All right. <clears throat> Brain games for the Atari 2600. Actually, this was at a time where they were still calling it the video computer system. Did you know that they didn't already... All, uh, did you know that they didn't always call it the 2600, but they did call it the VCS or video computer system? And let's see, we got in here the cartridge. Missing the top label, but it's the text label. And it looks like we got some. How to use it? Oh, this just, this uh, game uses these special uh, controllers, so called the keyboard controllers. I don't know if I have those or not. I'll have to look. I might. I've never played or played a game with those before, so I may have to do that. And there is the the nice man. Did they make artwork back in those days? There's some cool artwork and nice little um, looks like a uh, warranty card. And the box is in terrible condition, but hey, it's there and it's cool. So brain games for the Atari. Let's see. Next up, oh, I got some DVDs. This is really cool. Animaniacs Volume 2. I think Animaniacs was one of the funniest cartoons ever made. Animaniacs knew how to have fun without being vulgar, and I appreciated that. Um, I opened this up, looked at the discs. They look good. There's there's a lot of shelfware on the on the uh, box, but that's not a big deal. It's all about the content, right? So thank you, Steven Spielberg, for whatever you did to bring us Animaniacs. So there's Animaniacs Volume 2. This really got me excited when I saw this new on dvd not anymore but it's new to me look at that it's sealed it's gargoyles the complete first season this was made by disney animation i believe and um what it was was this happened at a time when the batman which is probably my favorite cartoon of all time when batman the animated series was popular and cartoons were uh, kind of I don't know if you say growing up, but they were kind of giving you some real stories uh, meant for older kids, not the younger kids. So you have these gargoyles, where the gargoyles are, are the heroes. And uh, they, uh, if I remember right, they were like in the Middle Ages, they turned into stone. And then one day they woke up on top of a New York, a New York uh, City building. And then they're trying to, you know, stay hidden, fight the bad guys. Um, also, uh, let's see, features voice talents from Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, I believe the guy who does Riker is one of the main, is the main villain, actually. But yeah, Gargoyles, brand new two-disc. This is something I've, I've always wanted, so it's really cool to find this. All right. Let's see. This was interesting. This is a pewter Mustang. Wheels don't spin. Nothing opens, but just... Just a cool little thing, and this is really heavy. You know, I said this this box was 11 and a half pounds. This is probably the half pound right here, because this this has a lot of serious weight to it. So, this little pewter Mustang, gonna put that over here. Look at that, almost could fit Scrooge McDuck inside. And finally, yeah, now this is what I'm talking about, Nintendo Power. I've been I've been wanting to watch. Or I'm, I mean, read one of these old Nintendo Powers. It's been a while. I used to have some. I think I sold them or whatever a long time ago. I actually had the very first one, and now I get to check out some good retro goodness in this old Nintendo Power. Look at that. We got a little Metroid cartoon. Got some uh, question and answers about Super Mario Land three. World Cup. You could see the World Cup. Remember for Nintendo Power Prizes? This one isn't that cool, but I remember they had like some really cool prizes. Like one was winning a samurai suit. Oh, and I absolutely love this feature back in the day, the top 20. You get to look and see where your games are. And look at that. You, the Super Nintendo's running strong with Super uh, with uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Mortal Kombat Legend of Zelda. Check this out. Nez is still being ranked. Still being ranked. Look at that. Jurassic Park 13. That's probably too high, but some really good games on there. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading through this. And uh, even has some collector cards, trading cards, and 
some coupons. How about that? I wonder if they still take them. Maybe if I go into some vintage store and... Oh, wait. Expired a while ago. Expired. What was that? 20 years ago. Well, in June. So, yeah. How cool is that? A little bit of tearing, but you know what? That's really cool. So this is the Retro Junk Box. I hope you guys appreciated this. I just want to thank all the guys who put this together. I wanted to thank uh, Mike and Jeremy. I want to thank Hughes and Jungle Rat Rob. And uh, if you want to follow this, you can follow it at the Retro. Actually, I think it's just RetroJunkBox.com. I don't think there's a the in there. So uh, RetroJunkBox.com. They're showing a map of everywhere it goes and some of the pictures of what everyone has taken out. Thank you again for letting me be a part of this. And stay tuned after the uh, box runs its course. I will uh, try and get a video up of all the stuff I didn't take and maybe some of the things I put in. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy retro videos like this, would you please like this and subscribe? I'd appreciate it. It'd mean a lot to me. This is the No Swear Gamer telling you have a great night, drive safely, and keep rolling retro. How you like that, Hemrock? I'll see you later.